All right. Well, we'll go ahead and get started because we have a very special guest today. Uh, good morning. My name is Kim Boyd, and I'm the Director of Membership and Investor Relations at the Calhoun County Area Chamber and Visitor Center. We are very excited to welcome our special guest today, Dr. Kathy Murphy. She is uh, our new um, president at Gaston State Community College. And at this time, I'd like to turn the introduction over to Ms. Kelly Pierce, who is one of our board members. And she's gonna tell us a little bit about our special guest today. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I looked at the clock and it's a little after 12, so it's good afternoon. It's great to see your faces. I do miss uh, our opportunities to meet face to face and so look forward to the chance where we can get together and um, not look through a Zoom lens. But I'm very excited today to bring Dr. Murphy to you. She came to us the 1st of January um, and has just hit the ground running and we're so excited about that. We really want her to uh, get to know you in Calhoun County and the things that we do there. So I thought this would be a great opportunity until we can meet in person. Uh, it's just to have her, Kim reached out and said lunch and leads would be a great avenue for Dr. Murphy maybe to talk to some of the, the people in Calhoun County. So I'm gonna turn it over to her, but again, thank you so much for joining us and thanks for all you do for Calhoun County. All right, Dr. Murphy. Thank you so much. I appreciate this opportunity. We've, we've been playing around with light in my office. As you may be able to see, there are lots of windows and I apologize. I think I look very red. At least that's the color that I'm seeing back from myself. So we're going to work on lighting. So maybe in the future, uh, it, it's not quite uh, as difficult to, to see me. I did Acknowledge though, as we brought more light in that you can now see my gray hairs, my puffy eyes and the wrinkles. So I was better when I was darker, but thank you. What, what an honor and, and a privilege to come and to spend just a few minutes of time with you. Um, I am beyond blessed to be able to be and to serve as, as uh, president at Gadsden State. And uh, please note my operative word, which was to, to come to serve as the president. Uh, I've said this in many forums that I've already been in. I do not see the presidency as my opportunity to sit on a pedestal while other people put their shoulder to the plow, so to speak, that this is about being exceptionally engaged. Um, I will assure you that the students in Gadsden State's uh, college, whether it's the Ayers campus, it's the Cherokee campus, or it's the main campus are very important to me. Uh, day number two, as I sat at this desk, I had a phone conversation with, with Michelle Conger just to say to her, hey, what goes on in Calhoun County, what's happening at the Ayers campus is important to me. So uh, I did the same with our Cherokee director and, and have had the opportunity to, to be over on our campus now a couple of times to include Monday I spent the day in, in Ayers, had an opportunity to go to Oxford High School and spend a little time with my, my friend, uh, uh, superintendent there, uh, Jeff, and to uh, just be able to see his school and his programs and the kinds of things that he's doing. I knew he was a, a superstar of a superintendent, but had an opportunity to really see that and feel that as we had a chance to go through Oxford High School earlier this week. I see a new friend of mine who's also on with us and that's Dr. Don Killingsworth. I, I appreciate so much. Uh, Dr. Killingsworth was willing on Monday to drive from his office to come over and to meet me on the Ayers campus. And uh, here's when you know you're working with quality folks. From the time I sat in this seat on January 4th, Dr. Killingsworth has already reached out to me twice with just nice notes and then was willing to drive over and come and, and for us to have time to sit at a table together. So I'm giving you two thumbs up. Uh, congratulations on your opportunity now to lead uh, at Jacksonville State University and no doubt about they're in just exceptionally capable hands. So I have a new friend and uh, thank you so much for, for uh, your time already invested in me. Uh, I appreciate that so much. Um, I have plans to be on the Ayers campus on a regular basis. 
Um, and so I want you to know that uh, while I enjoy Gadsden, Gadsden's only a third of my campuses, if you will. I have here in Gadsden, the city of, uh, the uh, Wallace campus, the East Broad campus, and also our Valley Street campus, and I'm making sure that I'm investing time and energy there. But I want you to know that, that uh, I also know that Ayers is our campus, and what's happening in Calhoun County will, will be and is exceptionally important to me, as is Cherokee and, and Center. Um, so again, I, I appreciate this opportunity. You know, one of the things I, I sometimes find is people want just, just to know a little bit about you. And so I don't wanna belabor that and uh, just get out in a bunch of weeds and talk about things that, uh, you know, only seem boisterous for me. Uh, but I, I will tell you that uh, I, I was, uh, I grew up in Butler County, south of Montgomery in Greenville. So as you head down 65 going to the beach, uh, you may be familiar with Priester's Pecans, which is in Fort Deposit. Uh, that's always a great place to stop. By the way, I have no financial uh, investment in them, so I don't say it for that reason. And after you pick up your pecans, you should then stop at the Greenville exit and go to Bates House of Turkey and pick you up a turkey and then head on south to go to the beach. And so uh, right there where Bates House of Turkey is in Greenville off of Interstate 65, as the, as the crow would fly, my, my home is not so far from that. So my home is actually in, and I still own a home in Greenville. That's home for me, grew up in Greenville. Uh, and uh, after going to Troy University, where I was uh, blessed to be able to go on, on a scholarship, was uh, uh, a first in my family to go to college. And so uh, needed that support with a scholarship, had the privilege to be my class president and from that opportunity was able to get a full scholarship to go to Troy University and what a blessing it was in my life. Dr. Killingsworth and I have decided we can still be friends. JSU and Troy University, as you well know, have sort of a contentious background, and, but, but, but we are all good friends. And, and uh, so Troy was my undergraduate study. I had the uh, opportunity then to be offered several graduate teaching assistantships, University of Tennessee, Chattanooga, um, University of Alabama, Auburn University, and then AUM. And as I've told several groups, it wasn't tough for me to decide, I went to AUM because they offered me the most money and I needed that financial support to continue my studies and to go into graduate school. Uh, from there, I went to Auburn University and you know, some people have, who are in the area of physical education sometimes have come to a point where, you know, they want to call it something else, kinesiology, biomechanics, exercise physiology. Uh, but I am uh, from that uh, department of physical education. Um, I was a wannabe athlete. I sure wanted to be good at some sport, but I wasn't worth a flip at any of them. If you when you meet me, I'm 5'1". I actually went to Troy and thought I could play basketball. The coach basically laughed me out of the gym that I thought I could be a walk-on. So I was suffering some sort of delusions of grandeur, I guess, about my abilities. Didn't take her long to figure out I was not a basketball player. Uh, funny story about that, Joyce Sorrell was the uh, coach at that time and uh, she allowed me for one week to run the bleachers. I think she was trying to run me off as she had me run the bleachers and I wasn't about to leave. I made her tell me I was not good enough and dismissed me at the end of the first week uh, from that basketball program. But um, uh, my background is in exercise science, physiology, anatomy, biology, love the sciences, love the study of the body. As I've told other people, the origins of muscles and the insertions and uh, ju just find the whole area of fitness just to be something that's important to me. It's really my catharsis. Uh, and so most afternoons as I leave my office, I, I head over to uh, our gym at Beck to, to get in a little bit of cardiovascular and some opportunity to do some weight training. Uh, participated in the National Women's Olympic, Olympic Lifting Meet back in the 80s and placed ninth in the nation and then I was a bandit runner in the, the um, um, at the Boston Marathon. So anyway, I've had some opportunities to, to do some things like that and continue to love to just try to focus on my health and my wellness and, 
And you know, we all should do that. So here's where I lecture you. Uh, eat well, get sleep, and go get you some exercise this afternoon. It's important for all of us. It's the greatest stress relief I have is to get in and get a good workout. Uh, so went to Auburn uh, University and, and finished my doctorate there. Had the privilege to teach in Auburn City Schools. And I, then I went to Judson College and spent some time there. Judson's a small college, Southern Baptist. And I got to do lots of things. I not only taught in the physical education department, I was the athletic director. I was the chair of the department. I ran the intramural programs. I coached basketball for a period of time and coached tennis. So I had an opportunity to put my hands on lots of things and wear lots of hats. I then went to the University of West Georgia and spent five years as, as an assistant professor in uh, Carrollton, Georgia. Um, got married and uh, have a beautiful daughter. Her name is uh, Caitlin Connor Murphy White. Now there's a good Irish name for you, Caitlin Connor Murphy White. My daughter is a classically trained opera singer, uh, South Alabama girl singing opera. Now go imagine. Uh, but she has been exceptionally gifted by God, has a beautiful voice, has invested a lot of herself and time and energy into the development of her voice, has traveled all over the country with opportunities to sing and uh, uh, is also involved in musical theater. You know, that was really good for me to have a kid like that because I had been so interested in sports that somewhere along the line, I had missed the importance of the arts. Um, and so when people say, did she get your talent for me, she must have gotten all of my talent because I have none as it relates to vocal and music and instruments. I have difficulty playing the radio well sometimes. So she, she got all those, all those talents and uh, what, what a blessing it is. I, I always say this, people think this is a little corny, but isn't it awesome to be a parent, to be trusted to be that intimately a part of another human being's life, to know that you have the privilege to offer that guidance uh, to a child at that level. And I just, I just counted a blessing and people go, you know, that's so quirky and that's so corny. And why do you say that every time? But, you know, I just believe it. It's a conviction I have. What a blessing it is to be that involved in, in the life of another human being. So um, that it, she is my only child. She says, when you get it right the first time, you don't have to repeat that. So uh, that's her story. And, uh, and so she travels all over the country and does musical theater and, and performs, uh, sings opera. And uh, she certainly is a gift to me. You know, she makes me a better human being. I bet you would say that about your kids. Uh, now there are days we could wring their necks. I understand that too, I'm a parent, but uh, you know, what, what a cool thing it is to, to be blessed with our children. I think she's made me a better person. I think she's made me more attuned to how do I really want children to, to be treated? You know, I always use the metric and the measuring stick as I moved on from college to be a, a principal. I spent uh, 10 years in the principalship. Well, excuse me, I actually spent nine years at, as an assistant, as a principal at a middle school. I'll spit that out in a minute. And then an additional seven years as a high school principal, a couple of years in the central office, and then my time also at the college level. So I've been doing this for almost, almost four decades. But you know, my metric stick for how I wanted students to be treated or how I do want our students to be treated is, is that good enough for my child? Would that be okay for me, for Connor, to be in that class or to be treated in that way? And so I do think as a parent, it makes me a better administrator because I know what I expect in terms of a teacher for my child. You know, I never wanted a pretty good teacher Raise your hand if it was okay with you that your child had a pretty good teacher. I, I wanted that rock star teacher. I wanted that not pretty good school, but that exceptional school. And uh, so I, I do think it, it's helped me put so many things in perspective. Um, so I'm coming to you after being a superintendent in two different school districts. I was in Monroe County as a superintendent, spent four years there, lovely community, uh, Harper Lee. Uh, is uh, from, from Monroeville, 
And uh, matter of fact, she lived in an assisted living home, which was almost a, a rock's throw from the central office. And uh, it was just kind of cool being in the same location prior to her passing uh, where, she, uh, where she lived and such a rich history in Monroeville and in Monroe County. I uh, spent four years as the superintendent there and uh, had the call then to go to Hoover City Schools. Hoover City Schools is a pretty big operation. Uh, we have, uh, or had, let me speak in past tense, um, we had 14,000 students and uh, we had 1,800 employees and 17 school campuses. $169 million budget at a minimum annually and a cost of $13 million a month to operate the school district. And so I've seen big, uh, not only in terms of students, but personnel and budgets. And uh, all, all of those have been very beneficial to me. Hoover's a terrific school district, but there really was a piece that was missing for me. I did the K-12 thing for many, many years. I had been at two different colleges, one smaller college, one larger college, one private college, one public college. The piece that was missing in my journey was the two-year uh, community college piece. And so I've been asked by people, why would you leave Hoover City Schools? And you know, what catapulted you to go to Gadsden? And, and I would say it was a journey for me to, to have this experience. You know, how can I make important and critical decisions to support our two-year learners. And in many cases, students who come to us are, are students who may also be first-generation students to go to college. Maybe students who are um, struggling uh, financially to be able to find a way to take that next critical step in their journey. And so I couldn't be more excited to, uh, to support our students now who are in this uh, journey in their education, whether they're right out of high school, or whether they're adult learners, whether they're trying to get a short certificate, where they're trying to get an associate, where their ambition is to take that associate on over to Jacksonville State or wherever they're choosing to go. Uh, how do we make sure that we are student centric, that we're engaged with those students and supporting them? The last thing I want Gadsden State to be is that college where you dart in, take a class and see how fast you can get off campus. And so one of the things that we're trying to do, and Kelly Pierce is just exceptional at this and will continue to hold my hand as we think about this, how do we become that school where it's about student engagement? How do we get them on our campus and how do we create hubs on our campuses, places where our students can wanna hang out and wanna uh, you know, create relationships and associations with other students. And, you know, I'm open to everything. Is that additional sports? Is that additional uh, fine arts opportunities? You know, what does that look like for our students? And, you know, does that include us looking at a student activities director? Uh, I'm just wide open right now for what does that mean for how we make sure that Gadsden's not a place you come take a class and leave, uh, but come out and hang out with us and have a collegial, have a college experience and uh, look forward to us finding ways to be able to do that. Um, you may have some questions and look, I'm wide open. I, 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 I'm happy to attempt to answer those, Kim. I don't know if that's appropriate to, 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 to do that, but I'm assuming folks could raise a hand if they wanted to and we could, uh, they could unmute themselves. And I, I'm, I'm happy to attempt to answer your questions. I think the most important thing I can say to you is I'm all in, I'm one to 100%. I'm pretty high energy. Uh, I've done this for a long time, had lots of good experiences that I think are good now for me to bring to the table uh, to help us. Uh, I will sort of finish with this last thought and, and, and then certainly want you to be able to share with me and or ask me things. We, we actually put three buildings that are on our campus on the Board of Trustees agenda during work session today buildings that we believe have long since out, you, outlived their usefulness. And, uh, you know, space is important and land is important. And how do we make sure that we're maximizing the use of our campuses 
And uh, so we know that sometimes people are passionate about buildings, um, but we want to be passionate about the right buildings, the right aesthetic buildings. You know, I, I think our buildings can be a, either a, a selling point for us or a sore eye place for us. And uh, so, so we're really looking at our facilities. The, I wish I could take credit for having brought that to the table. That, that certainly was a Dr. Lavender thing and, and, and my great executive cabinet. And I see Dr. Uh, uh, Leslie, you're on with us, I think so. Uh, Leslie Worthington and, and, and so the cabinet that all preceded me. I don't get to take credit for it, but I am supportive for us to address the buildings that need to go away so we can build the buildings that we need to and make sure we have the programs that take our students to the next level. Thank you again for spending your lunch hour with us today. Uh, Dr. Murphy, we look forward to a long, prosperous relationship with you and with Gaston State Community College. All right. Thank Thanks, you. Kim. Thank you.